Um, the first scripture that was read this morning was from John 2, and it was the scripture about um, the miracle, Jesus' first miracle of turning the water into wine. And our sex, second scripture is going to be from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. You know that when you were Gentiles, you were often misled by false gods and can't, that can't even speak. So I want to make it clear to you that no one says Jesus is cursed when speaking of God's Spirit, and that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are different ministries and the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. A word of wisdom is given by the Spirit to a person, one person, and a word of knowledge to another person according to the same Spirit. Faith to still another by the same Spirit, gifts of healing to another in the one Spirit, performance of miracles to another, prophecy to another, the ability to tell spirits apart to another, different kinds of tongues to another, and the interpretation of the tongues to another. All these things are produced by the one and the same Spirit who gives what he wants to each person. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, sometimes parts are important, aren't they? Um, I had an autistic client one time, and he loved to go to Goodwill and buy puzzles. Do y'all know how bad of a thing that is at times? Because if you're going to find a puzzle without one piece, it's going to be at Goodwill. And he was autistic, and he would get so upset, and I would try to tell him we need to buy the boxes that are closed, that are not open, and then they'll have all the pieces in it. But he would always insist when we went to Goodwill, we had to buy those puzzles. And then he would get upset if the pieces were missing. Parts are very important. My ex-husband decided one time to rebuild the transmission in my car. So he dropped the transmission, redid it, put it back in there, and he came in the house and was so proud of himself because he had an entire basket full of extra parts that weren't needed. And they weren't. If you didn't want to go backwards, you did not need those parts. The car would only go front ways. And I tried to explain to him those parts were in there for a reason. There was something about that part that was important and something about that part that needed to be in that car. But for him, his logic was, well, I didn't find a place to put them, so I didn't need them. So the car never went backwards again. At least not for me. (laughs) So parts are important. It doesn't matter. If I come in today and my hand decides to be a foot and I start walking on my hands, y'all are going to laugh at me. One, I'm going to fall and hurt myself because this wrist and this shoulder does not work. And two, my hands can't just decide to be my feet. What if my eyes decide to be my ears and my ears decide to be my eyes? That's not going to work because I'm not going to be able to see or hear anything. Life tells us that whatever part we are, that's the part we're supposed to be. And be happy in that part. I was telling Miss Irene, I was trying to get her distracted the other day, and I told her, I said, Miss Irene, I said, you've got to get better so you can come back to church. She will sing the loudest of anybody ever. And I do mean ever. And she sings off key most of the time. And it's okay because she sings with a joyful heart. And she looked at me and she said, you're going to have to tell them they're going to have to sing louder. I said, but Irene, we need you. You're the one that always leads us. We need our parts. We need the people that come and work together. My favorite cake to bake is a $300 chocolate cake. It's easy to do, but when I do one, I'm going to do five because 
if I have to pull everything out, I'm going to do five at one time <laughs> instead of just doing one. But if I take my two cups of flour and two cups of sugar and my quarter cup of cocoa and put it in a bowl and stir it up and put it in the oven and cook it, what's going to happen? I'm going to have a nasty hot mess. And that's all. It needs the eggs. It needs the milk. It needs the butter. It needs all those other things that go in it to give it moisture. Without the right parts, it's not a cake. It's just a hot mess. And it does nothing for anybody. We have to be a right part and accept that part. A lot of times people want to be other parts, don't they? We want to try to be something we're not. Um, when I worked in mental health, we had people that would want to do something that they really couldn't do. And we would have to tell them, no, you can't do that job because that's dangerous. And we don't need you in that role. We need you in this other role. And they did quite well in that role. But we have to look at what our parts are. What are the things that we do? I asked Irene the other day, like I said, we were trying to get her distracted. And I said to her, what was the thing that you used to make for bake sales? And she said, what? And I'm like, what were the things that you used to make for bake sales? And after she finally got over the shock that I was asking her just questions that were just off the top of my head trying to get her to calm down, she said, a vanilla pound cake. Like I was crazy. And I'm like, a vanilla pound cake? She said, yeah. She said, and it was really good. I said, well, what else did you make? She said, well, there were other cakes that I made, and she started listing off of these cakes. She said, did you know Bobby made pies? I said, I had heard Bobby made pies. I said, what kind of pies did Bobby make? Well, he made this custard pie, and he made a coconut pie, and sometimes he would make a pecan pie. And I said, well, who else in the church is making cakes? I said, I, w I need to know this information. She said, well, now so-and-so made this kind of cake, and so-and-so made this kind of cake. And she was telling me, all the parts of their bake sale. And so-and-so makes cookies. And I was like, that's good to know. I said, I need to know who my cookie bakers are. Because some people don't like to bake cookies. And so during this whole time, I'm trying to find out from her, what parts of the church does she remember? And she said, oh, now Sharon will bring her baked goods but she's the one that makes the hot dog and the chilies. I said, okay. And so we were going through the church parts. And I said, you see how important everybody is? She said, yeah. She said, we couldn't do all this stuff without everybody coming together. I said, and we can't do the singing evidently without you coming together. <laughs> I said, we need you. Parts are important. And even when you feel like you're job, your responsibility isn't important. It is. The things that you do are so, so important. We have people that do things that nobody ever knows they do, and that's okay. But they do those because it's an important part of our church. People that come in and do things and make things happen, it's okay because those are part of the church and they don't want to be recognized for them. When I got the call Friday morning, I went in the kitchen, and I just said, y'all have got this from here. All you've got to do is serve. I've got to go. I've got to go to Smyre, and I've got to go now. Well, I didn't have my car. Lee had it. And Donna said, when do you need to go? I said, now. And she said, let's go. She took me to Smyre and came back here and picked up the food to take over to Phoenix because we were running that close on time. <laughs> Everybody has a part and you just jump in and take over your part and do what you're supposed to. In the church, we have people that do different things. Jack said this morning that Nana won't kick anybody out of the choir. I mean, Mary Helen. I'm sorry, Nana. <laughs> Mary Helen, I heard you did kick somebody out of the choir. I, I heard it was a hit that you had somebody else to do it. I heard it was a hit that you talked to somebody about getting somebody out of the choir, that you got rid of Gary. Oh, no. I think Gary's telling a story, and he's not here today to take up for himself, so we're going to just assume that he's telling us a story. But Mary Helen needs those parts in the choir. 
for people to sing. The praise band still, you know, if somebody wants to sing in the praise band, please come on. If you want to, yeah, Joe's saying, yes, please come on. (laughs) If you want to help read the scripture, we can arrange that. That's good. Um, If you want to help with communion, if you want to help with the children, if you want to help with something, we're all parts that come together to make this whole thing work. How many of y'all have been to those first concerts with kids or grandkids or nieces and nephews? Y'all been to those, haven't you? You know that 15 minutes before they actually start, that torture that they put you through with everybody warming up and tuning up? Oh, it is the most horrible thing. And the first time I went was when Lee was in band. And I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all this squawking and noise and, oh, it was just horrible. And I'm like, God, if this is the way it's going to be, I'm going to have to leave my child's concert. I can't do this. And the conductor gets up there. The kids put their instruments down and there's total silence. And I'm like, yes, Lord, thank you. And then he raises his little baton And all the parts come together in this perfect harmony. And it amazes me that that is my child and she's part of this. And this happened with all four of my kids and it would always amaze me. And that 15 minutes before was sheer torture. But then when the director got up there, it was a complete different thing. There was harmony. There was love for the music. There was enjoyment. There were people smiling. There were people tapping along. Can you imagine what it's like for God when we all come together to work together? What sort of a music that makes to him and how joyful he is with that. He knows that some of us are parts that don't sing very well. And that's okay. But he still wants us to be in the band. He still wants us to be part of. And he says, you come to me and I will give you the gifts that you need. The Spirit will give you what you need. Because that's the way that I've made it to happen. I really am not a preacher, y'all. I'm not. This is not... You know, growing up, I didn't say, ooh, I know when I grow up what I'm going to be. This was not it. It's something that I'm amazed every time, every Sunday, that God has called me to this job, that he has called me to this responsibility. And I take it very seriously. And I ask God a lot of times, are you sure about this? (laughs) But what I've found out through the course of time is God doesn't necessarily call the ones that are already gifted. He gifts the ones that he calls. And so when I come to you, I allow God to gift me, to speak words to you. We are all in that position where God calls us to do something. Sometimes it may be something very small. Sometimes it may be something very major. But some, it's all very important to God. Fixing the bags on Friday. That's not that much of a job, is it, Dorinda? And taking them over there. You get the boys to take the baskets in because they're so doggone heavy. And it's not that big of a thing. It's not really not that big of expense. But for somebody, it means they get to eat on the weekend. And it is a huge difference in their life. For us, it's not that big of a deal. When we prepare the food and we have fun and we enjoy ourselves and we make all of this food and take it over, it's not that big of a deal. But we come together and we work. And for somebody, it's the only meal that they're going to get until Monday. And then they may not get another one until Friday again. Folks, we make a huge difference because we allow God to use us and to take the parts that we have and to say, okay, I know you've got these talents so we can use them. And he's excited about that. 
If you ever need chicken nuggets fried, the person with talents for that, see Larry. Because they were absolutely perfect. They were wonderful. We all have these gifts and these abilities. And we come together and we make this beautiful music. And it's a wonderful concert to God. And God smiles and he taps his foot. And he says, thank you. Thank you. God says to you this morning, be proud of the part that you are. Be grateful because he is so grateful that you allow him to use you. Amen.